uh, this brings a lot of versatility to what can be achieved through AI on, on the quality inspection. Because after all, the features that will trigger anomaly or not are not hard-coded into the system, mm -hmm. are learned, as Michael said, from the data. Okay. And indeed, this kind of systems and the one we have developed exploit exactly this thing. So not engineering the features into the software, but providing an algorithm that can learn those features mm -hmm. from the images provided by the user of the quality inspection system. And in particular, learning them from, as I said before, good samples. Welcome to Fnet Silica's We Talk IoT. We'll chat with innovators, experts, and business owners to learn how they are implementing IoT and using data to create new business opportunities. I am your host, Stephanie Ruth Hader. Today we are diving into a technical revolution reshaping the quality control and manufacturing world, AI-based visual quality inspection. And for this, I have invited two guests today on the show. I welcome Giovanni Gualdi, CEO of Deep Vision Consulting, and Michael Oetersbrot from Afnet Silica. Giovanni, Michael, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you too. Thank you. Since we are two guests today, let's get started, I guess, by introducing ourselves and what you do. Giovanni, would you like to start and what it is you do at Deep Vision Consulting? Sure, Ruth. Thank you very much. In Deep Vision, we work very actively on bringing computer vision solutions to our customers. Computer vision is a very challenging topic. It's not a new topic because mm, computer vision is there since more than 40 years, but it is uh, really a, always at the very edge of uh, scientific research. So it moves on and on. So it requires skills to bring uh, uh, added value to the companies. So that's what we do. We are basically the R&D company for our customers in computer vision. And I personally lead, I founded the company and I lead it. I'm the CEO currently. Great. Thank you so much. And Michael, over to you. Thank you, Ruth. So, um, so I'm market segment manager for artificial intelligence, machine learning and embedded vision at uh, Avnet Silica in, in Europe. Uh, we support customers in their journey to develop AI applications, to develop embedded vision applications. In fact, I started like about 20 years ago in, in this business. I started on engineering level. I was always interested in... Um, developing intelligent systems, so which is now what we call AI and, uh, and machine learning. Yeah, we work very close together with, uh, with companies like uh, Division Consulting and in particular in this case with, uh, with Giovanni. Cool. I'm very excited uh, to learn about what you guys do together. Maybe we should start by explaining the evolution of visual quality inspection. Can you briefly describe how it started and where it has moved from this until now? Sure. So visual quality inspection basically started with the eyes of men. So yeah, okay. that's the starting point. But then there, there came automation. And uh, I would say around the 80s or probably even, even before that. So it's not a new topic for automation. It was clear that there was an opportunity to check in an automatic manner the quality of what is produced and what is in the fields, how things are going on in the fields or under the conveyor line or in the warehouses. And there, computer vision, of course, plays a, an essential role. And of course, uh, software and algorithms has become smarter and smarter along the years, along the decades. And of course, AI started playing a very important role together with vision systems to make this quality control smarter and more and more effective along mm -hmm. the years. So this is how it started. And of course, it's not really needed to explain to who's listening to us the reason why quality inspection is so important. I mean, everybody can apply this technology to his challenge in the company or in the logistics or where, everywhere, and they can easily understand why it's so crucial. 
Maybe it's interesting to what uh, Giovanni just said to highlight also. So he, he explained, in fact, a manual process to an automatic uh, process. I think what is also important to mention is that the complexity for the implementation, so for skilled people to do this, it becomes more and more automatic. Mm -hmm. And if you take a look to AI, for example, or the implementation we have with AI or, or uh, machine learning, is that uh, you have now algorithms that simplify this uh, implementation and where you need less uh, human power, I would say, uh, to do this. Mm -hmm. I, I can imagine that it's very difficult to train an algorithm. What is an error? What is a mistake? Or I, I saw a demo. I think we will put um, a link to the YouTube video from the embedded world in the show notes so that our listeners can uh, also have a look. Because I think what you did or what the clever solution is that you worked upon is that you don't necessarily need, need to train the algorithm what the error is. He will just say, this is not what you trained me looks right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And this is, by the way, a, a very important feature for quality inspection, mm -hmm. for automatic quality inspection. One thing is to have a system that learns how to separate good ones from bad ones, having been trained or designed on both good and bad ones. Another thing is to say, try to recognize good or bad ones, but having been designed only to see, uh, see looking at the good ones, that is a very different thing. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, after all, Uh, what is regular, what is good, what is, is uh, um, without defects is easy to collect and it is there by the design of your process. What is the anomaly sometimes is really hard to collect, really hard to define. And so it's very important for a quality system to be able to find anomalies without any kind of definition of what anomaly is. And that mm -hmm. sounds probably quite philosophical, but it's <laughs> possible to do that. It's possible. Yeah, and it's also, I imagine, sometimes in the eye of the beholder, if this is something that it's it's not right, but it's also not the end of the world, so we can still leave it like this. You know what I mean? That could also be a scenario, right? It's like it's not perfect, but we take it anyway. The the separation between what is regular and what is defective is not just black and white. Mm. It's it's uh, it's there are many sh <laughs> shades of gray in in between. So. The other important feature of this system is to be able to provide a score of anomaly okay. that let the user of the visual quality inspection decide where to put the, the, the cutoff between what is to be accepted and what to be rejected. And this leaves the space of optimizing the choice by, by the user of the system who wants to be more picky on the mm -hmm. defects and who wants to be more generous on mm -hmm. the defects. Yeah, makes sense. I imagine, but this comes then with uh, a couple of challenges when thinking about integrating a system like this. What are the integration challenges um, of such a system in a traditional manufacturing setup? If we take a look to the integration challenges, um, it mainly depends what is already implemented uh, for an application. So if you have like today a manual process, for example, or an automated uh, process already in place, it's a big difference. If you take a look to an automated process, then it will be maybe less challenging to move to an AI-powered system because you already have, for example, the visual, uh, the visual uh, system. Mm -hmm. You have maybe the processing implementation or the processing device. Uh, the complexity can be then to upgrade, in fact, the software related to it. But if you have a manual process, then a lot of things need to be implemented, which does not exist yet, uh, like the visual system, the processing system, and also the expertise to do this. So it depends on what is already implemented today and how to switch from one to the other. This can be a big, uh, a big challenge. But um, I think what is even more important is to take a look at what are the benefits If mm -hmm. you go from an automated process to an AI-powered automated process, or if you go from a manual process to an AI uh, automated process, the benefit from manual to automated, uh, AI automated can be much bigger, uh, can be huge. 
Uh, mm -hmm. But of course, the cost can be that you need to have the expertise to do it. You also need to put more, maybe, cost on it uh, to do it. But in fact, the benefit or the outcome can be much more uh, beneficial. What would be the benefit? Well, if you take a look to the benefits of an AI-powered system is that you have the automatic implementation. So you do not need to think about how to implement it or to program it. For example, if you have like... In the past, bit, which still can be the case, but if you do like feature detection, for example, and you need to program this, if you have an AI-powered system, it can learn based on examples. It can learn based on the amount of data uh, that the algorithm can be trained from. And this is a big difference if you compare it with a non-AI uh, system. Absolutely. I should add that uh, this brings a lot of versatility to what can be achieved through AI on, on the quality inspection. Because after all, the features that will trigger anomaly or not are not hard-coded into the system, mm -hmm. are learned, as Michael said, from the data. Okay. And indeed, these kind of systems and the one we have developed exploit exactly this thing. So not engineering the features into the software, but providing an algorithm that can learn those features mm -hmm. from the images provided by the user of the quality inspection system. And in particular, learning them from, as I said before, good samples. That's another key point. You, the system does not necessarily need to have the information about what is defect, making mm -hmm. things even easier. So what would be interesting at this point, I think, because um, I've seen the demo, you're showing an example where you're um, training the system to identify this box is faulty and broken and not fit for packaging. And this one is the correct one. And this is how it should look. This is how you you show how the system works, that it learns really quickly how the box should look like. And then if there is a little bent or a little rip, your system automatically um, shows the area of the faulty rip or bend or whatever. So, but maybe it would be also helpful to explain with some use cases what, what other scenarios your system would be useful in. Is it only for logistics and packaging? What industries could be interested in this? Maybe what, what is interesting to mention is, uh, Ruth, what you just explained about the example that you showed. So with, um, with the, the box or, or with packaging. Uh, and Giovanni also mentioned that you have maybe a good or a bad object, which means it has anomalies or not. The system is not programmed what exactly the anomaly is. It knows that it's something not normal, which is not a standard. And so that means you can have many anomalies on an object like a package, for example. And this is one of the advantages you have with this kind of solution. And this is also related to use cases. So it works on different kinds of objects. It can work on different kinds of surfaces. Many cases, the traditional industry, like industrial automation, uh, production process. But I think what is also interesting to highlight is, and um, maybe Giovanni, we can explain that a bit more in detail. If you have applications where you want to rely on uh, maintenance, we have some applications where you have, for example, like a belt drive, so which is a kind of a frictional drive uh, that transmits the power between two or more shafts. So it's an elastic belt to find out if something goes wrong over time, because those belts, the friction will be different. And uh, to detect this uh, is quite complex. But with this kind of systems, you can do that over time. Even if it becomes dirty, for example, or there is dust, you can retrain the system so that it is able to detect if something is wrong with uh, the belt drive. This is quite mm. interesting because if this is installed somewhere else in the world uh, for maintenance, for example, if you have this kind of automatic system and update the uh, training of the AI part, then you can do this from a distance. You do not need to be there and you do only the maintenance when it's really necessary. Mm. And I think this is one of the big examples uh, or one of the big uh, advantages we have this kind of solution. And this is interesting because it brings what we have been talking about so far beyond the quality inspection. Okay. Because what Michael just said is not about manufacturing production. It's about monitoring, visual monitoring 
of a belt in this case, but could be whatever, in the fields or in, out there in usage by the uh, end users through this kind of AI algorithms that basically what they do is to find out what is really not regular given a trained regularity. So they have been trained observing an irregularity and they mm. are able to spot out if anything unregular is happening. We will take a short break. Stay with us. We will be hearing from our guests very shortly. This podcast is brought to you by Afnet Silica, the engineers of evolution. We help you bring secure, intelligent and connected products to market. If you want to learn more about us, we have put information and links in this episode show notes. And you can also connect with us on LinkedIn or afnet-silica.com. That's A-V-N-E-T-S-I-L-I-C-A.com. So is that the vision you also have for the next five to ten years to build your system up to something much bigger than just quality inspection? Where do you see this technology headed in the future? We are looking at an increased use of massive AI models that incorporate knowledge from, I'm, I'm talking about what we look in the generative AI Mm -hmm. uh, world out there. So they are basically incorporating this massive quantity of information. And here on the other side, we are looking at small systems that exploit AI to recognize very specific tasks. Okay. Is there going to be a merge in the future of the two? Is there going to be the possibility that these huge models go toward a smaller system and empower even more the possibility to spot out problems, spot out anomalies. We believe, Michael and me, uh, we believe it's possible. It will happen sooner or later. The point is that at the current moment, these huge models can only run in the cloud with very expensive systems. Probably in a few years, it will be possible to leverage this kind of models also on uh, at a smaller degree, talking about computing hardware. So it's it will be possible to see this kind of AI power also toward quality inspection systems. I think this is this is quite interesting uh, what Giovanni just mentioned about uh, generative AI, uh, where you have the uh, multi-modality uh, implementation. So in fact, with those models, uh, you can create new content just like text images, audio based on the huge amount of data that they were trained on. So one of the big examples, of course, is uh, Chat GPT. Uh, so it's a kind of, of machine learning implementation. But probably what is quite interesting is that over time, it is possible that even without using trained data or, or train the system, that it will understand what kind of object uh, it needs to analyze and what the kind of anomaly it is. Mm -hmm. uh, so that means, for example, if you have like in the food industry, like an apple, you do not need to train on apples because it is inherited already in the model. Those are huge models where trained on the internet, books, a lot mm -hmm. of data. And this is quite interesting that it's like Giovanni mentioned, uh, running into the cloud uh, for the moment in many cases, but there are already a lot of uh, trials and even implementations to run it on embedded systems. And okay. this is, becomes very interesting because then you have a solution that is capable of doing the visual inspection with a lot of, with, without a lot of effort, without a lot of training, without a lot of, I would say, human expertise. Um, and it can extract data uh, and understand what it has in the data and find out the anomalies of object surfaces or whatever uh, you want mm -hmm. to expect. So this is something that, this is a trend that is moving on. It comes, uh, I would say, when you take a look, it starts with the computer vision over machine learning, deep learning, up to generative AI. Mm -hmm. But this is a trend that is uh, since a few months, almost a year okay. now ongoing and will be one of the big 
new trends also in visual inspection. Now that's interesting because that would make it even more scalable than it already is. Because and now at this moment you don't need a lot of training hours for the artificial eye to recognize what's right and what's wrong. It would make it more scalable and then I suppose it would also make it easier for industries that have a mixture of products they want to assess at the same time, right? Because you could just run a variety of stuff by it and it would be able to pick out, okay, this is an apple, this looks right, This is, but this is a box, this looks wrong, and this is maybe, I don't know, the knife to cut the apple, and this should look like this, something like this? That is correct, yeah. yeah. Okay, interesting. Absolutely. This is also the advantage. So you do not stick to even to one specific application. Mm -hmm. uh, you expand this to many kind of uh, applications for several kind of industries. So when you say this is, has been happening for a couple of months, is this AI-powered visual quality inspection solution that you brought to the market something new that is still being adopted and you're still trying to get out there or is this something that has, has already been used for a couple of years? Well, th there are two things. If you take a look to generative AI, of course, this became popular into the public because of what happened with JetGPT, but this is mm. ongoing since many years already. Yeah. Uh, so it's not not super new. But I, I think if you take a look to how it can be implemented into visual quality inspection systems. So this is a matter of, I would say, short time. It's not like within 10 years, it's the upcoming years. But I think what we have here with, with, um, with the solution so that you refer to also is that everything is running onto the device. So it's not like generative AI yet. Mm -hmm. But it has a big advantage because the flexibility that everything is onto the system, the complete software, the complete algorithm from training up to uh, inspection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would really like to stress this thing because basically the revolution in AI started approximately 10 years ago, mm -hmm. at least with the AI for computer vision, with deep learning, probably a few of our listeners or some of our listeners listener know that and the paradigm was always of data hungry systems that rely on very expensive computing platforms and what we bring with our solution for visual quality inspection that we named the fact visual inspection dvi wants really to make a step further with respect to this paradigm because the Fed visual inspection is not definitely data hungry because can create the model for um, finding out the defects mm -hmm. with just a few images in the training. We are talking about a few tens images, so not ta 10 thousands, I'm mean, saying tens. And the other thing is that it computes the module on, in, on board of an embedded industrial system. And that's really a shift in the paradigms because okay. who uses the system does not need to upload its precious data to the cloud owned by third parties and doesn't need to worry about what will happen to that data. It can mm. compute all the AI models required for doing the um, quality inspection on board of his own system. That, that really changes the paradigm of using AI. And that also um, really nicely, I guess, sums up the advantage your system has over other solutions at the market at the moment? Yes, in, indeed. Actually, there are not many solutions, okay. uh, at the best of our knowledge, that can compute the model training on board of an, an inexpensive industrial device in seconds. Mm -hmm. And that is a real advantage for the, the user of this, these systems. Yeah, that's that's correct. Uh, so I think the, indeed the uniqueness is that you have a system which is a complete system, lower current consumption as a kind of implementation, what we see in the market, a request in the market that it can be installed in places where you would not have immediately access, for example. So, and 
I think this makes also one of the advantages. Another thing that makes a distinction with other systems is that we intentionally avoid creating a complete software. And that mm-hmm. could sound, what are they talking about? Are they doing software or not? Yeah, it's a software, but it's not a complete software. It's a, a module. It's a software library. Okay. Why we did this? Because we know that every single OEM that wants to integrate quality inspection into their own products needs his own logics mm-hmm. to trigger al- alarms, manage the statistics, manage the user interfaces. And there is no software, no complete boxed software that can satisfy all kind of needs of who uses this kind of system. So we prefer to stay focused on the engine, on the brain, let's say, Mm -hmm. that does the thing and let the user of the system to create his own logics around the brain Mm -hmm. so that basically it can accommodate all kind of logics from all kind of industries. That's another mm, quite peculiar things. If there's one piece of advice you would like to give to our listeners who now are excited about the topic of visual quality inspections and want to get started, what would it be? We are talking about, of course, the kind of quality inspection inspired to AI. Mm -hmm. AI means innovation. Innovation means going out of the comfort zone. So it's completely natural to have a resistance to innovation sometimes because it's risky, Mm -hmm. but opportunities are just behind this risk. So our suggestion is for all those that are listening to us that have any kind of interest potential interest in uh, this kind of systems to dig deeper, to understand what is the opportunity behind this challenge that is behind this AI term. And today we talked about the AI at the service of quality inspection. And we believe, and that's why with DVI, the Fab Visual Inspection, we invested so much, AI can really bring incredible opportunities to mm-hmm. the business. So definitely I would encourage to not stop there and just dig deeper into that. Yeah, I, t- I think this it's a very important point. So people don't need to be afraid to start with AI. But on the other hand, what we saw is that many people uh, start with the AI themselves without any knowledge. And in the beginning, they make progress because there mm. are many examples available everywhere on the internet or YouTube or whatever. But they struggle for a real product or a real kind of implementation. So they also should not wait to find the right resources, uh, the right resources also on on companies, for example, like what we do with working with Deep Vision Consulting, they are not alone to do this and uh, they need to do it on the right time, not to wait too long by asking for support, what we can also deliver mm-hmm. and also some expert companies in AI. And this is something we see a lot that people struggle with that after a while. And uh, this is a kind of demotivation, but it shouldn't be. And it's it's not only for for quality inspection, but it's in general, I think, that they need to consider that support sometimes is needed uh, to do the implementation in a proper way. AI, as we mentioned before, is not tied to giving away your data. I say this again because this is a strong concern mm. by companies because data is value means years of investments, of tries and trials and progress with respect to competitors. And I know that companies, many of our mm, customers, don't like giving away the data and they are right in doing so, especially if you give it to third parties, mm, even just for doing computation. And that's It's important to note that there are possibilities to exploit AI even at the edge in the field, even 
there doing the training at the edge without the need of sharing your data with anyone else. So that's extremely important also for this evaluation. Fantastic advice. Thank you so much. Thank you, Giovanni. Thank you, Michael. It has been great chatting with you. Um, thank you for all your insights. It has been a great show. Thanks a lot. Thank you. This was Avnet Silica's We Talk IoT. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and leave a rating. Talk to you soon.